Hello everyone, welcome back. So, let us continue our discussion. This week, uh, our topic is forced vibration. of m dot system now we have already derived the equation of motion so it is m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to f of t. Now, this type of equations we have already derived using uh, different uh, mathematical models and then uh, what we have noticed that this equation is a coupled equation and for that uh, we also propose the decoupling technique that is x equal to phi z. So, we start from the generalized coordinate that is x and then we convert it into modal coordinates where we have the decoupled system equation and uh, if we do that uh, obviously x dot will be equal to phi z dot and then x double dot is phi z double dot and of course uh, we have initial conditions. So, that is x 0 is equal to x naught and then x dot 0 is equal to x dot naught. Now, once we have this situation, obviously, uh, first we convert the equation into modal coordinate and for that we have uh, the transformation x equal to phi z and then uh, we use that transformation in this matrix equation. And then finally, what we do? We multiply both side by phi transpose and that helps us to decouple the equation. So, this is a decoupled mass matrix, we call it say M D and then this is decoupled uh, damping matrix. Obviously, it will be decoupled under some certain special condition that also we have discussed. So, this is our C D and then this is our K D. Right. Now, we can tune this phi matrix in such a way that this m d is uh, normalized. So, in that case finally, the equation of motion will be i z double dot plus if this is mass normalized we will have c uh, is equal to twice eta n omega n. So, that will be the matrix. Then z dot plus omega n square z is equal to let us call it f n t. Okay, so, how many equations we will have? If I write down in terms of modal coordinates, so z n double dot plus twice eta n omega n z n dot plus omega n square z n is equal to f n t. Let me uh, just modify this equation, keep it as is phi transpose f of t. So, what is f n? of t that is the force in the nth modal coordinate right so it will be phi transpose of f so if we have say 
f j all j th, uh, component then times phi uh, it will be transpose and then n j summation over all j equal to 1 to n. So, we have capital N modes. Okay. Then what we get from this set of equation is basically this equation. So, let me mark it say 1 that is in the modal coordinate or let us mark it 2 and this equation is 1. So, we started with the original uh, matrix equation for the m of system and then uh, gradually we end up with equation 2 uh, and then we can solve this equation uh, because this is a independent equation in uh, modal coordinate. But for that what we need to do is find out what is z naught that we can easily do. So, if you have say x equal to phi z obviously x naught will be phi z naught. So, we can easily find out what is z naught that will be phi inverse x naught. Similarly, we can also find out z naught dot will be equal to phi inverse x dot naught. Now, this is one way uh, to find out the solution uh, sorry the initial con conditions in modal coordinate. So, we now know what is uh, z naught and z dot naught. Now, once we know this we can easily solve equation 2 which we will do in a minute today that is also what we are going to explore. So, what we will do uh, we will apply some sinusoidal force at different uh, degrees of freedom of a m of system and then we will solve it. But the point to be noted here is that uh, in this equation we need to invert this phi matrix and uh, uh, we can avoid this matrix inversion just by a simple matrix operation. So, what we have is x equal to phi z right. What we can do is uh, write this equation at t equal to 0. So, we have x naught is equal to phi z naught. Then what we do we pre multiply this equation by m first. So, it will be m and then again pre multiply by phi transpose. Right. Then what we get on the right hand side if our system of equation uh, we solve it in such a way we tune this phi matrix so that it is normalized with respect to mass matrix obviously this will be 1. So, z naught will be equal to phi transpose m x naught and in this operation you see we do not need to invert any matrix without matrix inversion we can also find out z naught. Similarly, z naught dot is equal to phi transpose m x dot naught. So, either way we can uh, find out the initial condition and then um, we can use that to solve the modal equation. Now, once we solve this equation 2, so for that z n t we can easily write the expression what will be that this is exponential minus eta n omega n t then 
a n cos omega d n t plus sin so there will be a b n another constant sin omega d n t. So, that is the transient part plus there will be a steady state part. So, 0 to t then h n t minus tau times f n tau theta. So, that is the complete solution. Obviously, uh, the moment you try to solve this equation, we have to solve this a n and b n and for that we have already defined what is the initial condition in the modal coordinate. So, for nth modal coordinate, we can now find out uh, a n and b n based on uh, the initial conditions, the same way we did in case of SDOF system and then uh, we can find out the response in nth modal coordinate and then finally, once we find out for all n, then we can use x equal to phi z to find out the response in the original coordinate. So, that is the procedure we are going to adopt. Now, if you focus at this f of t, what you can see is uh, that all the degrees of freedom, uh, they have the forcing function. So, so, this f of t, it has n degrees of freedom and along every degrees of freedom, we have uh, this forcing function so defined. Now, imagine if uh, we apply a force which is acting only at a particular uh, degrees of freedom and that too uh, impulse. So, we have f delta t and this f vector is equal to 0, 0, 0 then in some location we have 1 and then again 0, 0, 0. Right. Now, in that case, uh, how to find out the solution? Again, uh, the solution is not difficult, uh, same uh, transformation will help us to decouple the system. So, we will have um, same uh, mathematical approach to solve the system of equation. On the right hand side, we will have phi transpose f times delta function. So, if I write down the equation along the nth modal coordinate, so it will be twice eta n omega n z n dot plus omega n square. So, there will be no dot here z n is equal to summation j equal to 1 to n phi will have n j times f j delta t. And this quantity again we can write down as f n. So, uh, effectively we will have the right hand side as f n times delta t. Again in this case, we have to find out z naught and 
z naught dot that we have already explained. I am not going to write it again, but the point to be noted here what will be z n? And if I consider the forcing function which is uh, unit impulse obviously, it will be um, f n times response due to unit impulse and that we can easily write down what will be that 1 by recall uh, impulse response function m omega d t here in this case m is 1. So, it will be omega d n then exponential minus eta n omega n t sin omega d n t. So, that is the response when we have uh, a force acting at a particular uh, degrees of freedom which is 1 here as you can see and uh, we apply a unit impulse. Now, the response in then rth degrees of freedom in its original coordinate system will be equal to summation phi of r n times z n t. So, n equal to 1 to n. So, again we first find out the modal response. Once we find out the modal response, we can actually evaluate the uh, response in the original coordinate system. So, that is how we are going to solve. Now, obviously, uh, in this uh, problem we have unit impulse and for that uh, we find out what will be the response in the modal coordinate. The only thing is what you can see is this f n is the amplitude of the force in the modal coordinate. So, what is f n? f n is the amplitude of impulse along nth modal coordinate. Right. And that is the reason because this is a linear system we have this part is due to unit impulse and that we multiply with the amplitude of the force and that is how we get basically the total response in the nth modal coordinate. And once we find it out then we can easily find out the response in the original coordinate system. So, that is the overall strategy to uh, find out the solution uh, of a dynamical system when we have forcing function. Uh, we will use Duhamel integral in a minute that we have uh, discussed in the previous slide here you see. So, we will solve this uh, equation in a minute and we will use the Duhamel integral code that we developed earlier and in fact that time I told you that uh, when we will have uh, our MDOF mathematical system and then we will use this code and today we are going to solve a uh, 3 dof system using uh, the same Duhamel integral code where modal uh, superposition we will use to find out the total response. Now, apart from modal uh, superposition we can also consider the coupled equation of motion as in this case and use uh, other numerical techniques like uh, Wilson theta nu mod beta to find out the solution in the next week when we will talk about uh, response due to support motion there we will solve the same system using uh, Wilson theta. 
So, today let us uh, solve some problem and for that what we will do? We will use the same uh, code that we earlier developed. So, here you can see this is the code we developed earlier. Now, let us just introduce one more uh, degrees of freedom. So, we have 3 degrees of freedom today and uh, I add one more mass. So, m 1 is 10, m 2 is 25 and m 3 let us make it little heavier 50. Similarly, k 1 is 100, k 2 is uh, 150 and k 3 let us make it um, 200. Now, uh, we have eta 1 and eta 2 that is the modal frequency in first two modes. So, in the first mode we have 2 percent for the time being in the second mode also let us keep 2 percent. We will change it as we progress. Now, it clearly indicates we are going to adopt Rayleigh's model for damping and that will help us to decouple the damping matrix. So, in this case uh, we have a uh, mass matrix which is having m 1, m 2, m 3 and then we have uh, stiffness matrix which we have to modify. So, it is k 1 plus k 2 minus k 2 and then 0, then next minus k 2, k 2 plus k 3 minus k 3 and then finally, 0 minus k 3, k 3. So, that will be the stiffness matrix and then uh, we can find out the Eigen values, then natural frequency, then we have phi, we will check whether mass and stiffness matrix are normalized or not and this is the way we calculate the mass and a stiffness proportionality constant when we define eta in first two modes and this actually gives you the proportionality constant and then what we do we find out c and then finally, check whether the c matrix is uh, diagonalized or not. So, let us quickly run this code and let us see whether everything is fine or not. So, as you can see, so we started with this is the mass matrix then we have the stiffness matrix. Finally, we get the mode shape and then Eigen vectors. Square root of the Eigen vectors will give us natural frequency that we see here. Then we also have the phi matrix and then um, first we check whether phi transpose m phi is diagonal and it is mass normalized as you can see here. And then also the stiffness matrix is normalized and the leading diagonal as you can see is omega n square. Then again we find out what are the proportionality constant when we define um, eta in first two modes that is 2 percent in this case. So, the proportionality constant alpha and beta are shown here it is 0 0.0265 and then uh, the next one beta is 0.0095. And then based on that we find out what is the C matrix and then finally, again we check whether it is uh, decoupled that means, it is diagonalized or not and yes it is diagonalized. This minus negative sign is for because of very small negative uh, values very small uh, which is practically 0. So, this is a diagonal matrix. Then uh, once we have this is done up to this point we discussed in the previous class. Then what we do now today we are going to find out the solution, but for that let us first define the forcing function. So, what we do we define forcing function 
and we will define sinusoidal force. So, we first define the time and then uh, we have 3 degrees of freedom so along the first degrees of freedom we apply a force of say 2.5 sin So, first frequency let us set uh, 1.5 T, then uh, along second degrees of freedom amplitude of the force let us set say 7.5. frequency is uh, let us set uh, 6.5 and along third degrees of freedom let the amplitude be 2.45 sin the frequency let us set uh, 15 t. Let us see how it goes. So, we have the forcing function defined. Now, recall uh, we have to find out the modal uh, force F n. So, for that what we have to do? Let me rewrite this. This is not F n. So, F of t then f n is going to be phi transpose f of t. So, that will give us the forcing function in the modal coordinate and then what we do? We initialize the response So, we have 3 uh, degrees of freedom. So, we will have 3 x x 1 x 2 x 3. So, that we initialize first and then uh, what we do? We start a loop and then solve the response in each and every mode and then finally, we will combine them. So, let us also define Z n is equal to So, at this stage what we do? We um, call the Duhamel integral. So, the code is here that we developed earlier. So, we will use this function and uh, here I just wish to draw your attention that uh, we are not solving the complete response that I leave it as a home task for you. You can easily um, top up this expression with the response due to initial conditions in the model coordinate that I leave it as an exercise, but uh, let us solve the particular integral. So, in the modal coordinate mass is 1, k automatically will be omega n square, then uh, we have to find out eta n. 
remember this eta n is not the modal uh, critical damping ratio. So, that we have to find out how we can do that it is very simple. So, what we have here uh, say this is C d then uh, we have that is the diagonal matrix in the modal coordinate after decoupling. So, eta n will be equal to in all modal coordinates eta n will be equal to diagonal of C d dot divided by 2 star w n. Okay, so, let us quickly check So, C d is not defined. So, let us uh, do it once more. Yeah, what you can see in the first two modes we have 2 percent damping which is obvious because that is what we started. So, at the first two modes we have defined 2 percent damping. Then in the third mode we have uh, 2.87 percent damping, but now we have the modal damping is estimated. So, here uh, give the modal damping and then uh, this f n we have to also define for the particular modal coordinate. So, that is done. Now, so let us complete that uh, loop for all modes and then once we have the response for all modes. So, what we can do x of t will be equal to phi times z job is done. Then we are going to plot so let us plot all three degrees of freedom in a single go. So, let me use three different color. Along first degrees of freedom it is blue, then so that is defined. Now, So, we have three floors, they are marked. So, we have a response along three floors, then Okay. 
So, the coding is now complete. Let us run it and let us see how the response looks like. Something is wrong there. Let me check. Uh, So, there is some problem here, I will uh, debug it in a minute. Here is the problem. Let us check. Okay, so, we have the response. Let us just increase the time a little bit. So, we define time here. So, let us try with say 60 seconds and here you can see the response of the system. Now, three different colors um, along three uh, degrees of freedom that is showing the response and you can see each and every response um, is having um, sinusoidal nature, but uh, there are multiple frequencies because uh, we linearly superimpose uh, when we convert the forcing function in the uh, model coordinate and that is uh, why we have the effect of each and every floor. This is a coupled equation. So, every floor is getting uh, influence from uh, the others and that is why we have this type of forcing function um, giving the response in this pattern. So, you can identify different floors and then um, that is the respective um, flow response. Now, what we can do let us quickly check if we increase uh, damping then does it reduce uh, before that just let me once more run it. So, we have the maximum response 0 0.05 and uh, now if I make it say 10 percent or 5 percent in first two modes then you can see the response is getting uh, reduced because of uh, higher damping. So, if we increase it more, let us see what happens. So, um, make it 0 0.1 and you can easily see its impact. Okay, now, uh, you see the natural frequency for this uh, 3 dof system we have 0 0.8217 radian per second, 3.3983 radian per second and 5.5476 radian per second. So, when we apply this uh, forcing function let us forcefully adopt this uh, drive as driving frequency and let us see what happens.
and let me reduce this damping. So, I bring it back to 2 percent modal damping in first two modes. And you can see the response grows and this is what we call as you all know this is what we call resonance right. So, that is also we can uh, explain clearly because of resonance uh, there is a huge increase of uh, response. The simple reason being we set the driving frequency as the natural frequency of the system. Now, uh, if we just multiply it by 10, so that means we increase it by 10 times. Let us see what happens. Obviously, there will be no resonance as we can expect, and as you can see here, there is no obviously we have very high frequency, but there is no resonance, right. So, you can see the impact of resonance on the structural response. Here again you can see three different uh, degrees of freedom uh, vibrating with uh, a combination of different frequencies that is because they are again coupled system of equations. Okay. So, this example clearly gives you the idea how to solve the m of system in time domain uh, when we have uh, coupled system and that we decouple using modal coordinates. Uh, so this modal transformation uh, x equal to phi z helps us to actually decouple the system equations and that is the reason uh, we get n uh, uncoupled equations which is here and that is what we solve using Duhamel integral. Right. So, uh, what I will suggest you uh, I mean include this remaining part in the code and then uh, prepare it for any m of system that you have and you can easily solve the system using time domain approach. So, uh, with that let us uh, conclude our discussion here on the response of uh, MDOF system in uh, time domain. In our next class, we will talk about response uh, of the same system when we convert it into frequency domain and we will see as we all know in case of SDOF system, we have already noticed that if we convert the system in frequency domain, then solution is uh, much easier instead of Duhamel integral. Uh, we will get a very compact form and uh, that in Fourier domain helps us to very easily find out the response of the system. So, that we will discuss in the next class. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.